I mean, the coronavirus is a perfect example of like why we created the show. Years ago, we saw that something like this could happen. The incredible reach of the Chinese Communist Party in American society is dangerous and something could go really wrong. The coronavirus is the perfect example of that. Right. And Millions so, dead. And so Chris Chappell decided to start China Uncensored and scream into the void. I am Cassandra. I mean, I think that I, we have to keep screaming, though. You know, there's not, there's not really any other choice. Mm -hmm. Like, what are we going to do? I mean, think about what has happened to people in Hong Kong over the last two years. Uh, there was an interesting story. It was about these three Hong Kong or five Hong Kong protesters who managed to make it to Taiwan in a boat. Unlike like the Cubans. Yeah. Like unlike the 12 people who tried and then got uh, taken in by the Chinese Coast Guard and then ended up in prison in mainland China. Yeah. These were people who actually, you know, made it to Taiwan and then the Taiwanese government couldn't quite acknowledge them. And they were, they helped them. But then they were like, you need to leave Taiwan because you can't be here or else this might be a pretext for war that the Chinese Communist Party could actually launch an offensive on Taiwan based on them harboring um, dissidents. So actually behind the scenes, the U.S. State Department reached out and helped these people get to the U.S. essentially. This was under the Trump administration because they came in early January to oh, the U.S. Okay. But the story is just being reported now. Wow, that's a great story. It's, a, it's an incredible story. And, you know, it's kind of think about, you know, Hong Kong when – under Mao was the place that mainland Chinese people fled to. Mm -hmm. Like people would swim from Guangdong province to Hong Kong to try to make it. And one of these protesters who kind of is in the U.S. now and fled by boat, his grandmother swam from mainland China to Hong Kong. Wow. And now he had to flee Hong Kong uh, in a boat. And then he had to swim from Taiwan to America. That's incredible. But, but I, I do want to interview these people. I think they have to be a little bit anonymous right now. Yeah, okay. But it is, I mean, it's incredible. Like Hong Kong was the place of Operation Yellowbird, right? Where people were helping, you know, Hong Kong celebrities and even Hong Kong triads were helping Tiananmen Square massacre survivors <laughs> flee out of China. I like the idea of like Hong Kong gangsters being like, like, you know, we like crime, but, you know, Tiananmen Massacre is too much. Like, we're going to help those victims. Before the Communist Party co-opted the triads as well. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. But <laughs> the, the triads were good once. Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, just the Communist Party. Uh, is worse than the triads, I think. And that, is able to influence true. everyone. Yes. The Communist Party is is the worst gangster of all. Yeah. And, and I think that's the main message, you know, we were saying we were screaming into the void. Sometimes when you scream into the void, the, the void screams back. Uh, the, the point is, I'm trying to make, I think, is that, you know, as, as we were saying earlier, this won't stop with Hong Kong. It won't stop with Taiwan. The end goal, and the Communist Party is very clear about this, is to dominate the world. And unless we use this limited window of opportunity to do something now, that's going to disappear. Like, imagine a world where we are financially dependent on whatever currency China uses. Imagine the leverage that would give the Chinese Communist Party. That might not be that far away. That would be terrifying. And especially the way that with their new digital currency, they can essentially, they have the power not only to monitor everything you do, but to instantly cut off your access. Like, that's terrifying to me. Yeah. Yeah. Time to move to Mars? Oh, no. But Elon Musk is already co-opted by the Chinese Communist Party. There's no escape. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I like the idea of Mars as the last democratic bastion. We, we, have to, we have to drill into the center of the Earth. What? That's like the opposite of going to Mars. Oh, yeah. you mean create a, a, a democratic republic inside the hollow Earth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> inside the hollow flat Earth. Uh, oh, that's I weird. have questions about the hollow flat Earth. <laughs> Well, the Earth can be flat. It just depends on the thickness of the flatness. There yeah. might be enough room for it to the for there to be a hollow core to the flat Earth. Yeah. 
is the reason we make jokes like this is because we spend like an hour talking about how the world is on the brink of an authoritarian unending nightmare. Yeah. And it's always the same. Like what we talked about, what Matt was mentioning with the lab leak, like that the same reason is in every other industry, right? Co-opting individual people. Uh, you know, to have their interests aligned with the Communist Party, making, you know, industries financially dependent on it's the same playbook and they can use it over and over again because we never learn for yeah. some reason. Well, that's why so many people were concerned about Biden as president, because uh, the, co- the Communist Party did this with his son, Hunter Biden. Yeah, I, I except mean, nobody wanted to cover that. Yes, strangely, strangely. <laughs> the void. Hey, it's he still not... hasn't divested, by the way, from that company. He said he oh. was going to divest from that investment company, but nope. Well, I have an idea. How about we digest Hunter Biden? What does that even mean? Most problems in life can be solved through cannibalism. All right, Something yeah. my mother told me. All right. I, I feel like now this has gone completely off the rails. Yeah, the void. It's... Hey, it's not illegal to scream in America. For now. So you can still scream into the void. I mean, unless YouTube, which is owned by Google, and all of their close connections to China, cuts off our screaming. Remember how much they, like every episode we did about Hong Kong in 2019 when the protests were going on, demonetized, age-restricted. Yeah, it was bad. That and the coronavirus, like YouTube really did the CCP a solid by clamping down on our Hong Kong and coronavirus episodes. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think that that what the, the way it affected us is we just lost a lot of money. But the way it affected the overall media environment was that a lot fewer media covered things. And when they did cover them, they covered them less or they covered them without showing as much of what was going on on the ground. So like the overall impact was much greater, I think, than the impact on just our own bottom line. Well, no, it's not just that like we lost money. If we hadn't set up a system where fans could directly contribute to the show and we didn't have that kind of fan base that valued what we were doing, we would have been out of business. There would be no China Uncensored. Yeah. So it's not just like a loss of money. It's like this would be a channel that was gone. Right. No, but I mean, my point is that we covered it anyway, knowing that we were going to take a loss on the ads because we still had this other form of revenue from from viewer contributions. But for most other media, the impact was much greater because it actually, they changed how they covered things and what they covered. Right. I mean, we don't know directly what kind of decisions go on in the editing room. But, you know, from my experience, you know, in in nearly two decades as a journalist, like most of the editorial decisions, uh, the readers and viewers never see. Most editorial decisions are actually just about which stories to cover and which nine out of 10 stories to not cover. And so when those decisions are getting made, you never really see that. So you don't actually, you can't really see or measure the impact of this kind of self-censorship based uh, system. Well, 90% of all media is owned by like five companies and these gigantic mega corporations have a lot of interest in China. So what decisions are being made? Like a news company has to satisfy their corporate sponsors. Yeah. It's just another way that the US is vulnerable is when there's Chinese money involved in you know, sponsorship for media companies. So it's just the list, the list goes on and on. Yeah. Well, the the, the only way to solve this is the, the Communist Party needs to be treated like, uh, it's the internet, why not? It needs to be treated like Nazi Germany. Everything goes back to Nazi Germany. But seriously, that's, it's- it So you're saying IBM a, should invest in China? Half and they? They already did uh-huh. a chip sale in the 90s. And it has to be that, like, the people of the United States of America find it intolerable that any of these corporations are doing anything with the Chinese Communist Party. It has to be such a major outcry from the public. The void needs to scream back at those in power. But you got to, like, what was America's 
view of Nazi Germany in the, the late 30s. It a great was, place to invest. Well, in a lot of ways, yes, right? It was, it was, you know, Hollywood was adjusting certain things for the German market. And there were some Americans who were like, oh, like it's, it's kind of bad there, or I don't agree with it. But there were a lot of Americans who were like super pro uh, what was happening in, or in Nazi just Germany. just in denial. There was a lot of denial right. about what's happening, kind of like with like the Uyghur genocide right. and organ and, harvesting. And, and well, I mean, imagine if Western companies had been involved in the Holocaust. Right. But oh, the, wait, IBM was. Yeah, and like the New York Times like barely covered it. And you had like Jewish newspapers who were like screaming into the void, like, like this is happening to the Jews. And everyone's like, oh no, that's just biased because they're Jewish newspapers, right? And then like, who was right? ultimately. Uh, so it's just, I would say it's, it's, it's not like if people recognized it was Nazi Germany in China now that they would do something, they would just do the exact same thing they did in the 1930s, which is be like, well, maybe it's not so bad. Maybe it's being, the problems are exaggerated. I'm sure it's not actually a threat to the rest of the world. 